In this video, I'll discuss some non-destructive editing techniques. This will act as a counterpoint to what you learned in the previous video. Go ahead and open the Bologna JPEG, and this time, instead of assigning a brightness contrast adjustment directly to the background, we're going to assign it as an adjustment layer. To do so, click this icon here in the Adjustments panel. We see the Brightness and Contrast sliders in the Properties panel this time instead of in a separate dialog box, but they have the same effect. The difference is that now we have this as a separate layer. We can toggle it off and on to see before and after views, and we can double click on the layer thumbnail to go right back to the Properties panel where we can make adjustments. This gives us added flexibility. The next thing I'd like to attend to is the noise. Instead of assigning the Reduce Noise filter directly to the background, which would be destructive, we're going to assign it instead to a smart object. This will retain editability for us in the future. To do so, hold down the Shift key and select the background layer so that both layers are selected. Then right click on the word background and choose Convert to Smart Object from the context menu. The smart object is identified with this symbol on the layer thumbnail. The smart object is like a container. Those two layers are inside this, but now we can apply filters to the container and they will be maintained parametrically. To see how this works, just go up to the filter menu and choose Noise. Reduce Noise. I'll accept these parameters as they are and click OK. We see the filter appear down here. Again, we can toggle it off and on to see before and after, and we can double click on the filter effect name to go right back into its effect dialog where we can make adjustments if we want to. This gives us a lot more flexibility because we don't have to commit to a destructive edit, we can leave this as a smart filter and it gives us the flexibility of changing our mind in the future. Next, I'd like to sharpen specific areas of the image. If we try to use the Sharpen tool, we'll see that it's not available here. You can't sharpen a smart object directly because that would be altering the pixels. Instead, we can apply a filter that will accomplish this. Go up to Filter, Sharpen, Smart Sharpen. Set Amount to 200% and Radius to 1 pixel and click OK. Again, we have it now as a Smart Filter so we can see before and after. So far, so good, but that's not exactly what I intended. I want to sharpen specific areas of the image and not the whole image. So to do that, we're going to have to apply some creativity to do this non-destructively. Go up to the Layer menu and choose New, Layer via Copy. Now we have a duplicate layer. Let's throw away Reduce Noise in the top layer, and we'll throw away Smart Sharpen in the bottom layer, so that now we have one filter on each layer. Target the Smart Filter Mask on the top layer and invert it by pressing Command-I on the Mac or Control-I on the PC. So this completely hides all of the Smart Sharpen effect. Now I'd like to selectively reveal some areas by painting on this mask in white. Use the Paintbrush tool, make sure white is the foreground color, and set Opacity to 100%. Paint over the archways, the signs, and the tower to sharpen them. However, you'll notice that Reduce Noise is no longer operative. If you toggle this layer off and on, you'll see that nothing changes. And that's because the pixels on this layer completely obscure the pixels underneath. To solve this problem, we need to change the blend mode of the top layer. Open this drop-down and select Lighten as the blend mode. Now we're going to have Smart Sharpen on the top layer and Reduce Noise 
on the bottom layer. So in this video, I've shown you several techniques that allow you to work non-destructively, and we'll continue with this in the next video.